Thanks for tuning in. Today we have a barrel from White Oak Armament that was generously loaned to the channel by subscriber Aiden Hall, who is part of the Farm 3-Gun Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can check them out by clicking the link in the description below. Getting back to the barrel, we will go over the current condition of the barrel and take a look at the specs, give it a thorough look over on the bench, and then head to the range to shoot some 30-shot groups. The owner bought the barrel in February of 2021 and has put an estimated 4,000 rounds through it. The owner stated that the barrel was not meticulously maintained and bore cleaning was not on his priority list. When I received the barrel, I took a peek through the bore scope and the bore had a bit of fouling in there, but with a little bit of scrubbing, it cleaned up pretty nice. Getting to the specs, the model number of the barrel is 5SPR-16. It is marketed as a shorter SPR style barrel with a step behind the muzzle to accommodate the Ops ink suppressor. The barrel is made from 416R stainless steel, has a 1 to 7 twist, 223 wild chamber with mid length gas, a 0.750 gas block journal, and standard half by 28 threads. Weight is listed at 2.3 pounds, which is just slightly different than what I measured in that. And I would put this barrel on the heavier side of things as far as weight and barrel contour. And the gas port was measured at 77 thousandths, which seems like a reasonably sized gas port for a mid-length 16-inch barrel. Moving on to the bench, we will take a closer look at this specific barrel in particular, starting with the throat erosion gauge. And the throat looks to be in pretty good condition, gauging between a 1 and a 2 with this gauge. All right, with that out of the way, we'll take a look at the inside of the bore. I cleaned up the inside of the bore before taking the bore scope footage. There is still a bit of stuff a few inches forward of the throat, but overall it cleaned up pretty nice. And here is a look at the throat. Everything looks pretty good to me. There is a little bit of fire cracking, but not a whole lot. Nothing that I'm too worried about. And as we move forward a few inches, you can see that the steel is still a little bit dark in the grooves. And as we move farther forward, things are looking nice and clean. The rifling also looks to be in good condition, so no concerns here. And here's the gas port, which looks to be in pretty good shape for 4,000 rounds. There's more erosion on the muzzle side of the gas port, which is normal. And here we are at the crown, which looks good to me. Nothing looks out of place. And the rifling looks to be in good shape at this end of the barrel. And yeah, I'd say everything looks pretty good for, uh, for 4,000 rounds. Okay, next up we're going to take a more thorough look at the chamber by taking a peek inside and then gauging a few things. Here, you can see that the chamber is clean with no obvious defects. Nothing looks to be out of place here for a barrel with 4,000 rounds through it. Uh, but I am mainly showing you this footage to demonstrate that there is no foreign debris in here. And here's a new gauge I bought from Pacific Tool and Gauge. It's a 223 wild chamber function gauge that checks the chamber dimensions. The gauge should be able to drop in the chamber, and the bolt should be able to turn and lock behind the gauge. And you can see here that the bolt is nowhere close to dropping in far enough to be able to lock in place. And I'm using a wooden Q-tip to extract the gauge because it gets stuck in there a little bit. You want to be very careful with these gauges because they are very precisely machined. And although they're made of steel, if you accidentally nick or dent the gauge, it instantly becomes worthless. Anyway, to check to see that there is nothing obviously wrong with the gauge, we're going to try out on the Sons of Liberty Gunworks SPR barrel and see if it fits. And the gauge fits with the bolt able to lock in place behind it. Next, we have an ammunition gauge from Sheridan Engineering. This is different than a case gauge or headspace gauge. And here's a dummy round with resized brass and no primer. And you can see that the dummy round is within spec. And next, we're going to see if the barrel will accept the dummy round with the bolt locking behind it. And it does, no problems there. Next up, we have a Forrester 223 minimum headspace gauge. I know it's kind of difficult to see with the glare coming off of it, so I apologize for that. Anyway, we will see if the barrel has at least minimum headspace with this bolt, and it does. Next, we're going to take a look at the gas block journal. We will start with zeroing out the micrometer, and if you look at the barrel, you can see that there are some love marks from the previous owner. You had to hammer on the gas block because it was a tight fit. He said the gas block journal was oversized to get a better seal with the gas block. And here is a quick look at the barrel markings so that you can confirm that this is the white oak barrel. And a quick look around to where the gas block would sit to confirm that it is clean with no obvious defects. And let's see what we get here. The listed size is 0 0.750 inches and we are getting about one thousandths over that. And we will check in a few different spots to see if that's a consistent measurement, which it appears to be. Okay, so let's double check and make sure the micrometer isn't off. Here is a FN barrel. I apologize, I know it's kind of hard to see the markings, but let's see what we get here. And we are getting about one to two tenths under 0 0.750, which is very impressive. So the white oak barrel appears to be about uh, 0 0.0009 oversized. I did reach out to white oak to see if they intentionally oversized their gas block journals, and here's the response that I got. So their spec is supposed to be 0 0.7500 to 0.7502 to allow for a snug fit. So, it appears that this particular example falls a little bit outside of that. Uh, also, just a quick note about their customer service. When I sent them the email asking about their gas block journal size, I received this thorough and well-written reply in 7 minutes. 
which I would consider a phenomenal customer service. Uh, anyway, I was impressed by that, so I thought I would mention it. Okay, let's get back to it. Moving on to the barrel extension. There was a bit of barrel bedding compound still on the barrel extension, which I tried to clean off as best as I could without scratching the metal. And I tried to pick a clean spot to get the measurements from. And here's what I got. It's a bit oversized compared to mill spec, but that's not uncommon for match barrels. Usually most people would want a tighter fit with the upper receiver. The minimum dimension for the upper receiver bore is right at one inch. So this should make for a nice tight fit with any properly machined upper. All right, moving on to the shooting setup. The barrels fit into a tight fitting upper receiver. After greasing the threads, the barrel nut was torqued to 40 foot pounds. The the barrel was cleaned prior to this range trip. The handguard is free floated. No muzzle device is used to prevent possible interference. A 3 inch bag rider with short mounting screws was used to fit the front rest. An A5 receiver extension is installed with an A5 0 buffer and Sprinco green spring. The trigger is a Geisley two stage super dynamic three gun trigger. A few rounds were fired prior to shooting the first group to foul the bore and zero the scope. The scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44. Scope mount torque was confirmed at 60 inch pounds and scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch pounds. Magnification is set at 20. And parallax of set and confirmed with a head nod test. The barrel will be cooled with a chamber chiller between each group. A chronograph will capture the velocity of each shot. A Mantis X10 Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle was at the moment of firing. And the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. I'll be shooting 30 shots per group. All 30 shots will be fired consecutively over a period of about 4 minutes per group. This will help me determine how well the barrel will perform in a match or practical type setting where the barrel might get some heat into it. And all groups will be fired at 100 yards. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target with the point of impact set a few inches above to preserve the aiming point the rifle will be shot from the prone with a front rest and rear bag wind will be monitored with a ribbon each group will take about four minutes to shoot and will be edited down to about 15 seconds today i'll be shooting three groups we'll start off with hornady 73 grain eld match then we'll move on to aac 62 grain fmjs and last we'll finish up with aac loaded with 77 grain sierra match kings all right let's do it starting off the groups with Hornady 73 grain ELD match. You'll notice that the brass starts ejecting a little bit forward. The recoil didn't feel particularly harsh and the gas port sitting is reasonably sized. I know people like to use ejection pattern to determine if the gun is overgassed or not, but in my experience that isn't always accurate. Also shot number 27 was a little bit off. I placed the reticle a little bit to the left and didn't correct it for some reason. We will finish up this group and then take a closer look. Okay, so we had an average velocity of 2463 with an SD of 25, and we ended up with a group size of 1.706 MOA with a mean radius of 0.403 MOA. And looks like a pretty nice circular group with the exception of number 27 and four. Uh, shot number 27 was a called not good shot by me. The trigger press was good, but I had the reticle in the, in the wrong spot. So if you exclude shot number 27, the group size goes down to 1.403 MOA, and the mean radius goes to 0.384 MOA. And we'll just look at shot number four here real quick. The velocity was just above average, and the stability score was 99.9. .9. And we'll look at the velocity highs and lows real quick. So the lowest velocity shot was shot number 13, which is right here. And then the highest velocity shot was shot number 14, which is right here. And if we break the 30 shot group down into six five shot groups, the best five shot group was 0 0.5 MOA, and the average five shot group size was 0 0.9 MOA. And if we break the group down into 10 shot groups, we had two groups that were 1.1 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 1.2 MOA. And with that, we'll head to the next group. Okay, so some user error with the shooter cam. I ran out of memory, so the shooter cam stopped recording. So instead of watching me shoot, you just get to see holes being poked in paper. Recoil felt fine, the shots felt fine, and there was minimal wind and the chrono recorded all shots the mantis missed two shots and i think that's about it okay for the 62 grain aac we had an average velocity of 2799 with an sd of 36 the group size was 2.319 moa with a mean radius of 0 0.699 moa and the group looks to be fairly well distributed the height and width are about the same so there's not a whole lot to look at here uh, the worst shot according to the mantis was shot number 13 which is right here and then if you look at the velocity highs and lows, the lowest velocity shot was shot number three, which is right here. And then the highest velocity shot was shot number 17, which is right here. And if we break the 30 shot group down into six five shot groups, the best five shot group was 1.5 MOA with an average five shot group size of 1.8 MOA. And if we break the group down into three 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 1.9 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 2.1 MOA. And with that, we'll head to the next group. Okay, so we have a less expensive 77 grain sear Match King load from AAC. Uh, shooting felt fine with this group, nothing significant to report on my end. Wind wasn't much of a factor. Uh, brass was ejecting forward again, but recoil felt fine. No malfunctions, the chronograph captured all the shots. The Mantis did not record three shots, and yeah, that's about it.
So we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Okay, so we had an average velocity at 26.72 with an SD of 14. And the average Mantis score was 99.5, which is about my average. The group size was 2.569 MOA, with the mean radius of 0.587 MOA. And we got a couple shots we can look at here. We'll look at 12, 16, and 22. So shot number 12 had a velocity that was slightly higher than average, and the stability score was at 99.5. Shot number 16 had the highest velocity of the bunch, and the stability score was 99.5. And then shot number 22 had a velocity that was higher than average, and a stability score 99.8. And the worst shot, according to the Mantis, was shot number 6, which is over here. And if we break the group down into six five-shot groups, the best five-shot group was 1.0 MOA, with an average five-shot group size of 1.4 MOA. And if we break the group down into 10-shot groups, the best 10-shot group was 1.3 MOA, with an average 10-shot group size of 1.6 MOA. And next up, we'll look at the overall results. Before moving on, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the content and found it useful, it would help me out a lot if you could tip the channel with a $2 super thanks so I can buy more ammo and equipment to help grow the channel. Thanks again. Let's get back to it. Here are the overall results for the White Oak SPR barrel. You can see the hard numbers here in, with the green header, and then we will go over the AZ scores real quick. The AZ is the A zone equivalence distance, and we calculate the score by taking the mean, mean radius from the 30 shot 100 yard group, and then multiplying it by four, which gives us an estimated extreme spread size. And then last, we figure out the distance where this group size would equal 5.91 inches, which is the width of a USPSA A zone. And we end up with this number, which is the maximum distance where the group size would still fit inside a USPSA A zone. So the best group of the day was the Hornady 73 grain ELD match with an AZ score of 300, 350 yards, followed by the AAC 77 grain Sear Match Kings trailing pretty far behind with a AZ score of 240 yards, and last with the 62 grain FMJ load uh, with an AZ score of 202 yards. Of course, the barrel may have done better with different ammo and on a different day, and I am certainly not a perfect shooter, so all these groups could have done at least a little bit better. But this is how well I was able to shoot this rifle with this ammo on this day. Next, we'll look to see how this compares to the other barrels that I've shot. The Oak SPR came in a very respectable second place. Still a bit behind the Sons of Liberty Gunworks SPR barrel. You can look and see the AZ scores of 472 yards compared to the 350 yards with the White Oak. And here's a quick side-by-side -side of the groups so you can see the difference. Also keep in mind that this barrel isn't exactly a pristine example. There weren't any obvious defects in the bore, and the barrel still has a decent amount of life left in it, but it does have a fair amount of rounds through it, so that may or may not have played a factor in the results. But all in all, I thought this was a pretty interesting one. We had the failed chamber function gauge, but it functioned just fine with my shooting, and the owner of the barrel said he never had an issue with it. So obviously failing the gauge does not guarantee that you will have problems, but I would generally prefer the barrel not fail the gauge. But of course, you can form your own opinions. Also, we had the oversized gas block journal, which caused a bit of an issue with fitting the gas block, but I was able to work through it. And I thought the performance was pretty good, earning the second spot on the leaderboard. There also was some 40 ejecting brass, but the recoil and bolt velocity felt fine as far as I could tell. So I don't really consider that to be an issue. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And also, again, a thank you to Aiden Hall of the Farm 3 Gun for loaning me out the barrel. I very much appreciate it. And that'll do it for now. I have a lot more content coming for this AR-15 barrel series, so make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you next time. Later.